In this video, we're going to look at the FM synthesis mode. Now, we looked at the main oscillator controls, and we get into all of these additional forms of synthesis, either by clicking on these or by clicking on the zoom here. And they both open up the same oscillator zoom window where we can move between the different modes of synthesis. Now, on the main tab over here, we have the controls that we've seen on the main interface here. They're just presented a little bit differently. I'll click the zoom, and we'll see there's our transpose, our course, and fine tuning, pitch tracking, the analog phase control, shape, symmetry, hard sync. So nothing we haven't seen before. We can even switch between sample mode here and synth mode and even call up the sound source browser. But in this video, what I want to do is look at FM synthesis. Now in this mode, the timber of one waveform, which is called the carrier, is changed by modulating it with the frequency of another waveform called the modulator. Now the FM oscillator here in Omnisphere acts as the modulator. So it can modulate any of the wavetables or sound sources. So whatever we have loaded in, and in this case, it's the basic waveform that is used on the initialized patch. This one over here, I'll play it for you. We're going to use that one as the raw material. And in the FM synthesis mode, whatever we choose here is used as the modulator. It can use any of the 400 wavetables that we have here in Omnisphere 2.0. So that really opens up this FM modulation a lot. And the frequency and depth can be modulated, which adds a lot of nice possibilities. And this new boost function really widens the range and creates a lot of new possibilities. So let's go through the parameters and see what they do. Now, to start with, we have keyboard tracking, and we already know about that. Basically, it allows the modulator that we're using here to either track the pitch of the keyboard when it's on or when it's off. It remains at one static pitch. Now, the frequency slider over here controls the frequency of this modulator oscillator. And remember, this oscillator isn't actually heard. It's used as a means of altering the timber of the main oscillator. And when it's set really low, it creates LFO type of pitch effects. And as we increase it, they get progressively faster until they create a buzzing kind of effect. So again, I'm going to play it for you without this on, just to remind you what the sound sounds like in this raw waveform. And I want to get kind of clinical so we can really examine what this is doing. I'm going to put this all the way down at the bottom, and you'll hear the shape of this. And we can use any of the waveforms. I'll speed it up just a little bit, and we can hold the shift key to move in finer increments. Let's try a little bit like that. Max is kind of a random type of waveform, and any of these are interesting shapes to use. So they're all really interesting, and there's obviously thousands of possibilities when you start modulating the parameters. Now, the thing with the notches on this slider is that they represent ratios that produce the most musically useful results. In other words, they're harmonics of the main pitch. So when we move them, when we move to the sliders, we want to get to 250, 500, or 750. And you can get fine control by holding the shift key down. So let me just move this around, and you'll hear what it does. That's with pitch tracking. Here it is without. So very different colors. So let's say I'm going to move this to 250. I'm just going to hold shift so I can get it right there. Sounds almost like a phasing type of sound. And similarly, 750 will again be harmonically sort of in tune with the main pitch that we're using on the keyboard to trigger the note. Now the depth slider over here controls the depth of the modulation. And again, let me put this all the way down here and you can hear the effect. And again, this is the shape it's using. Let's go back to a regular sine wave so we can really hear it clinically. So the depth of how high and low it oscillates the pitch of the carrier. And we have this boost mode, which brings it to really extreme ranges. So 
So you can get those really metallic type dissonant sounds when the tracking is off. So that's the boost and normal modes. Now we have FM shape over here. And when we move this slider, it sweeps through the wavetable and you can actually see the shape change. Let me go to a little bit more interesting type of waveform. Let me slow it down. And you can, of course, modulate that. Now, symmetry varies the span of the wavetable, of this modulator wavetable. And again, we can modulate either of these. Now, if we want to modulate and we're in this zoom view, instead of having to go back up and set up the modulation there, we can do it directly from within here. And this is a new 2.0 feature. If I right click here and go modulate with, for example, an LFO, I'll get this little window on the side, which allows me to work and maintain this view over here. So let's just quickly set up LFO1. And it's already set up and routed to the shape control because that's what I clicked it on. And in fact, that's not what I want. I'm going to mute that one. Actually, let's right click here and go unmodulate. I'll just remove it. And this is what I want to modulate, the symmetry. Modulate with LFO. And there we go. So you can see here I'm using a sine wave to modulate the symmetry parameter. And I, as I change the rate, you can hear the effect of it. So it creates interesting movement in the color of the sound. I mean, I don't want that much depth. So you can see I got a really wide palette of sound possibilities available here. And finally, we have hard sync, which we've talked about before. Yeah, let me slow this all the way down. Let me put these sliders down so we can really focus on what this is doing. I'll go back to a regular, say, a soft waveform. So again, it's really useful to thicken up a sound. Again, I'll use the shift key to get it right in tune. And that can also be modulated and it's a nice way to add movement to the sound. So that's a little overview of the FM synthesis engine. We'll continue with more in the next video.